right, let's get started. All right. Mm, three again. All right, my friend, welcome to the Vectorize 5D channel. I'm John Silva. Let me know if you guys can hear me well, please. Meanwhile, I will show you about the topics that we're going to discuss. First of all, um, we're going to talk about the new version of Affinity 2.3. What are new here, the features, and if it's also, let's say, is a good update. I will share my opinion, of course, as always. <laughs> and all right. Let me know, guys, if you can hear me, OK? I hope so. Hello, Anya. Hello, Down. Hello, Vela. All right. Congratulations, my friend, for staying here with me. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the the features, right? Uh, about this new version, and it's uh, got updated yesterday, in I think thirty, uh, no, this um, November. And first of all, we got the Sparrow tool, right? Let's talk about the Sparrow tool, how we can activate this tool. First, we need to open Affinity, all right? Here, as a quick example of this tutorial, you can find this tool right here by clicking on the shapes, all right? Hold the click and then go here in Spiral. And then you must click and select to insert this tool right here. We, we got this new feature that allows us to create different type of spiral. We can have uh, here by click on top, the styles. Oh, thank you for letting me know, Vela. So we have here the semicircular, we have the counter uh, semicircular. And it is very nice, of course, to have this kind of feature because we can save a lot of time by, let's say, here, the Fibonacci. It is one of the most used in golden ratio. You know, you can use this a lot to plan any kind of mock-up. Let's say that you are planning a movie scene or something. So the golden ratio allows you to have this kind of, you know, uh, a better composition. You know, it's more for composition. So it's it's very nice. You know that Affinity is really is really bringing this feature to us. Also, we have other settings that you can explore here on top. We have a, a lot of settings to change the, the, the shape of it. It can be rounded or can be sharp, just like that. Also, there are the turns that, let me change here to linear. The turn is the amount of time that the curve's going to happen, you know, like that. Uh, also, we have here the the angle that this will have more. So if you want, ah, I want to have this kind of uh, detail to be placed right here, or you want to create, let's say, some kind of snail shape, you know, imagine this being the snail shape. It is, it is really nice, you know, it's really nice. Save us a lot of time. Also, you have other parameters here, which is the angle. We can create some very crazy abstract shape, you know, having like like that. Oh, you can have, this could be an eyes, you know. Also have the inner radius, which is represented uh, about how big it is, this curve from middle. Thank you all, Vela. Guys, oh, listen Vela, please don't forget to hit the like button. <laughs> so I'm going to explain as well about the new um, functionality that's called auto select, right? So, just to share with you my opinion about this, it's a very nice feature uh, for sure. But uh, we still, we are still missing the biggest one, like the auto tracing. <laughs> I will always, let's say, uh, remind us about that. So I'm very looking forward to see the auto tracing, you know. But yeah, here we go. Uh, I hope that it's clear for you about the the spiral. Remember, remember that you can convert this to curve and change the shape, right? You can convert to cur the curve and change the shape. But if you do that, you're gonna lose all those functionalities of changing the properties, you know? So be careful, if you convert it to curves, you will lose the ability to change the parameters. Make sure about that. So 
Um, let me see if I'm missing something here to explain. Yeah, I think that we have covered, ah, before. We have the present, okay, the present here as well for the shape. Let's say that you have created this uh, spiral, spiral one, and then you change here somehow. So if you click here, remember that I save it, I can switch this to the previous version. So you can create another document and then kind of reuse that setting without changing from scratch, which is very time saving, you know, this is very nice. And also you can navigate to others present available for you right here. And also you can export to your team, your friends, things like that. But to be very honest with you, uh, this is a kind of feature that I don't see me using a lot. I'm more illustrator, but for graph designers, people that work more with patterns, oh, absolutely this is fantastic, you know. Hello, Raul, my friend, welcome um, from Venezuela. It's very, you know, uh, now our neighborhood here from Brazil, nice. Okay, uh, here we go. We have it now the present, I hope that you understand about this. And another thing that I really like, it is the keep selected feature, all right? This one here, before we didn't have, but now we have. Let's say you are drawing, let me grab here my, my Cintiq tablet, just to make a quick example. So you are drawing somehow, and then if you if you release your click, is going to insert right the line. But using the keeping selected, essentially it's going to of course keep it selected because before when you insert a line, I think you just kind of ignore that. You know, it's kind of uh, the click, the selection disappear. And before, I think four years ago, when I was using a lot of iPad, I was kind of, oh my gosh, when I was creating the lines, I really wanted the ability to change the color of the line. And now they, they added that, you know, and I haven't been asking uh, this feature, but it's nice that they noticed that this could be a nice improvement. Here, for example, I will keep the select and then you insert the line and then you can change immediately as you draw, you know, you can change immediately, which is time saving, you know, it's, I'm doing here some confetti just as an example, but it is really time saving. And the next, let's talk about the, let me grab here, the, our map. <laughs> so we have the, let me open, the pixel grid, the pixel grid. The pixel grid, it is related to, of course, more the, to the pixel art. I don't know if you guys are very familiar with it, with it, but I will explain how that works. For instance, we need to create a document that contains a very small canvas. Uh, so far, this is a big canvas. And to work with pixel, you must go with, you know, small, small density, which means something like this, 100 pixel to 100 pixel. That's fine. Click here, create. There we go. Uh, for instance, when you go here in view, you're gonna see that we have now this panel that's called pixel grid. You can disable or activate. However, you can't see something happen here, and I will tell you why, because you must zoom this in, and then you can see these squares. These squares means essentially that we have the pixel. And to use the pixel, you can go here in pixel persona, and then you can go here in the pixel tool and select the brush that you want. Let me grab here the white color and change this and scale this down. So can you see that it makes very, very pixelated as I scale this down? If you use the brush in small size, then you can be able to create, let's say, ah, the, the character of Among Us character. No, let's say he's these legs and then the eyes and then the, the pack. I need to see his reference to remember. But let's say that uh, the pixel is made only for that purpose. So you can essentially change here. For people that works with, let me make this in, as an example, a better example than this. Let's say that you go here and make a grass. I make a grass like this. 
very good and then I will just okay scale this down a bit more and then I'll grab the brown color place below here or maybe about Mario so you can create a kind of map tile map like that I will now add some and then the nice tip about using the pixel that method you must go and scale this down you know and then you go here let me select this back then I'll increase here make some grass like that and add some just some lines here oh. so basically it's how you can work with pixel I'm just painting like normally I would, I would do but to give you a context but what I'm missing somehow you know um, okay we have the erase let me see if we can erase this alternate yeah that's odd because we have the pixel to apply the you know uh, the erase all right like the uh, like that to paint like that however we don't have an erase to erase as pixel we must go with the paint brush and then go here which is which is I feel like it's strange we, we, we must have some alternative way to do that but so far so good this is the new method to work with pixel art and other than that we we got some let's say behind screen more updates related to Affinity Publisher you know I'm not used to use Affinity Publisher to be honest because I'm not fully uh, let's say graph designer I, I do more illustration but for people that uh, wants to protect the PDF let's say you are generating some PDF now you can protect there are more settings that you can explore one thing that I like that they are improving the move data entry all right which is this feature right here I'll exp explain more about it this tool here the move um, and duplicate it reminds us the tool from Adobe Illustrator let me go here uh, in the hold on here so this tool is not actually a tool because you cannot select but let's say that you add this square here somehow like this and then I hit enter once you hit enter you're gonna see this panel this panel now we can change for example the the amount of numbers that this will duplicate first to make this um, happen in a nice way you must go here and duplicate and add the numbers of copies but if you add and then nothing is happening it's because you must change the parameters let's start here with the distance I'm going to increase this distance but the distance is being applied by horizontal only if you want to go in the vertical you can scroll up your mouse wheel and then you can change just like me and then I'm gonna reduce a bit more the amount of this number of copies let's go something like this I want uh, apply a few so it's, it can be applied like this the nice thing is that you can do in real time you know uh, Affinity is doing very great about that so we have this kind of result one thing that we see here is also the scale the ability to scale let's say that you want to make a kind of zoom effect somehow I will just apply like this also you can change the insertion mode you can you can apply this to be placed in overlay like above the layers or below can you see so you can have this result as well let me increase more the number of copies and the nice thing is that it applies let me hit enter again ah, and finally uh, if you somehow click outside you're gonna kind of lose the settings you know but let's apply this in quick way again I will make oh, there's the rotation as well I think that I've showed you before about this I know uh, most standard which is the rotation and angle but now it's new new uh, there is new improvements over here let me decrease the amount of numbers so you can create some abstract shape you know look how nice it is and the nice thing is that it is very um, smooth you know it runs really good 
uh, compared to what a W Serial does when I was used to use a W Serial a lot of years ago. But here you can have different type of results, you know. You can make some kind of cards, you know, imagine that this can be a pile of cards. So you can think in this way as well. You can rotate and hit uh, OK. And it's going to insert multiple layers, you know, it's going to have a lot of layers on here based in your duplicate settings, you know, which is, it's nice, you know. It's not, so, again, it's not something that's gonna, oh my gosh, change everything that I do, make me feel, you know, a god, <laughs> uh, no, but it's still a nice feature, it's a nice improvement. Okay, I'm not here just to judge affinity, you know, uh, but essentially just to cover um, what they are bringing to us. There are some little improvements about UI. I work as well with user interface and I'm not seeing Affinity doing a lot of real improvements over the UI. Uh, it's still very same, but there are some extra functionalities available to us, you know. This is a live stream, my friend. It's a live stream. I can see your name. It's Vic Heldy Ward. And here, you can change now the background assets of the assets panel. How you can do that? Let's apply. I haven't applied honestly yet because I've just updated Affinity here. But you must open the assets panel. Go, go in here in assets, and then you, of course, you need to select the the panels, the assets library, and then you can change the background over here. You know, it's very intuitive. This is very nice. So you can change here, uh, and again, this will not uh, change my workflow. Like, oh my gosh, you know, it's it's just an uh, improvement. Okay, and other than that, we have the keep select that I explained uh, already, which is very nice for uh, iPad. It's located on top, all right. You must go here. So um, yeah, I think that is all for now. Regard a film design where I work most, all right. What I like most is the pixel grid. It's really nice. I really love that. Uh, I think it's the most that I love. And now I want to bring here, uh, of course, as usual, a tutorial, right? So if you have watched it, just to know about Affinity, <laughs> you are done, <laughs> but don't go yet. I will be happy to, uh, you know, have you join it yet with me. Uh, so I have a great news to announce now before we go, which is the new brush set that I just updated. It's gonna be available for our existing uh, supporters, the people that support everything that I do here. So I'm still doing the YouTube because of the supporters. To be honest, if if I don't have the supporters, I, I would only work as freelancer and not YouTube because YouTube takes too much time and it's very stressful to be honest. Sharing with you about my struggles, um, here you can download, all right? You, first of all, how you can download, you need to join to the club. Also, I will make it this available for the ultimate class, all right? But you're gonna click in the resources. Let's say you join the club or categories, you need to move to the resources uh, uh, panel. Go here, it's gonna be available in the first screen. And on here, you're gonna have my new Ultimate Raster Brushes, my little friend. Let me show you. How to import is very simple. You, you can open the Raster Persona. It needs to be the Raster Persona is not a vector, and I will explain why. Then you go to the Brush Panel, then import. It's very easy, intuitive. I just made a quick tutorial here. And uh, let's talk about these brushes, all right? Uh, the brushes is dedicated for I'd say illustrators that wants to bring a more realistic aspect, you know. So I I've been working and experimenting a lot. All of these brushes in my workflow, I have done a lot of work using them. I can show you some preview. Let me open here. Let me close this for now. But as a good example of how these brushes really made my work good, it is this one here. I think this is a very nice one. So can you see um, all these brushes that I'm showing you, you know, from the Ultimate, I've used it completely on here, you know, to make this 
character. I use it. Uh, it's a boss for game. I'm game artist. So basically, I made the vector shapes and then I paint inside to give this more artistic elements, you know. So yeah, I think I think that I showed a lot about this. Let me back to the exercise. So um, and let me show you how I, I would use this brush, all right? Because uh, it's important that you understand my workflow. Because being an artist and illustrator, it's it's important that you start to recognize some methods to create a bit more, to create better, you know? Uh, because if you rely only about vector, let me tell you this. If you just draw a shape and then you, you change, and like this, let's say. Um, the vector is awesome to change the shapes, but if you want to bring more kind of texturing, let me give some examples here. If you want to bring up quick paintings, let's say that I will paint using this brush here, the round soft, all right, this one. And then I'll grab this color, but I make this a bit dark. Let me select this one. I'll create a new layer, of course, good. And then I'll start to paint over here. Oh, look, I'll paint inside. Obviously, I need to paint inside to clip. And then I have m more control for my drawings, let's say, like this. You know, I'm painting. It's a very awesome brush to give this soft, smooth shading style. And if you want to smudge more, you can simply go here and use the smudge brush just to fade this a bit more. You know, you can go here. Ah, but I want to add more details. Let's go with that. I will create a new new layer just to emphasize this a bit more. And here I will just uh, add some lines. I will add one line here, another here, and another here. What is this object? I don't know. You tell me. I think that's a carrot. Nice, so I'm creating some lines here. And there are other brushes, obviously that's going to create even more, um, let's say, depth, all right? For example, this one here, I call this as a high, which is more highlight. Let's say that I apply this on here. Oh, look, I'll make this bigger and I'll apply this below. It applies just in one side, you know, it's just applying one, one side. It's not, uh, let me show you. It's, it looks like a, a kind of crease, you know, can you see? Like that. I've just optimized it as well, this brush. I'm going to apply this to be placed some lines here. What I like in my design is the quality, you know, it's more, what I look is the quality, like this. And then there are others that's going to add, let's say some texturing. I can add this one to be in white. Let's apply this, just new layer because I want to keep this editable later. You can add some kind of texturing here and bring this a bit dark. But you need to be careful to not mess, <laughs> you know, but because textures is makes a bit more um, busy, you know. There's another that is, is noisy, is going to create a more, let me bring here, a bit soft, and then I'll apply this and decrease this opacity. It's going to make this a bit more noisy. It it's creates a more texture. Can you see? There is a slight difference, but it's really adds a more valuable, you know, uh, let's say, overview. I'm going just to apply a bit more shadings using this brush that I really like. The one that I like a lot is this one, the crease, because I can simply, this is a, a quick demonstration. And I can just paint here a little bit more, well, painting this side, I can add more a brush stroke like that. Look how it's becoming. I'm rotating because for my hand, I feel like it's more comfortable. And then you can create this texture. 
Yes, uh, this will be available for the master class students. All right, it's going to be included right, as well. No words, which is awesome. You know, uh, I want to let's say contribute for our existing people that somehow join it to my courses to you know got something from me and you know there is no fee at all to upgrade your brushes in my new version so yeah let me go here and ex explain a bit more about the drawings methods all right so here is a quick demonstration let me decrease this uh, stroke for now hold on scale object and there we go here uh, regarding drawings, you know, I have two ways to, to make drawings. The first one, it is the, with the round brush. And here, I usually go in this way. I make it a small brush, you know, like, like this. And then if you go gentle with your hands in your drawing, just to uh, explain. Let's say that you are drawing, uh, it can be a penguin, all right? Let's draw a penguin here. Uh, I will draw a shape like that. I'm going very gentle, not very no hard, no, try to avoid bold strokes because you only go with bold strokes if you are very happy with your idea. So I usually go with very smooth, you know, um, drawing and lines and then let's say that I make something like this and then I make a boring penguin here somehow. Drawing the belly, I usually try to erase and let's say that I make him like this. And I can add uh, a Santa Claus hat here somehow. I usually go with this kind of directions, you know. And then, of course, I go with the same brush, you know, same brush, this one, but using the erase and then I start to erase and clean up my design. If I go very gentle, I'm going to use the round soft just to erase more my idea. I'm going to erase and this stage I can go with a bit more using the same brush basically, a bit more hard strokes using stabilizer just to define a bit more my line. Let's see that I go here. You can see that my line now is more defined. So we call this in a second pass. Second pass stage, which is a more refining. We, we are refining our idea. So let's say that we add shape like this somehow. And then let's add a boring penguin here. Our tug penguin. <laughs> we are just playing around the shapes here. Let's make it this way here. Nice. And can you see that I have defined more my lines? This is what makes the, the drawing quality much better, you know. So first I go with the sketch and then I go with the, the final line. Obviously there are much more brushes that you can explore. Let's say um, if you want to make something like Spider-Man, I made a, a brush that's called Spider. So you can make some, let me apply this in a different layer so you can understand a bit more. Hold on, I will make this a bit lighter and I will fill this in this way, just as example. Let's say that you are painting, I'm painting a little bit. I'm not using vector, just raster for now. And then, uh, I'll paint more like that and here. Just to have a thumbnail. And then if I go with uh, a white color and I'll place right here, let me paint this area. Here, the eyes. And another one right here. 
and what you can do it is to use a brush that's going to smudge using the spider-man um, do, do you know the spider-verse from miles morales here you can use this brush using the smudge and then you can have this texturing here so imagine now we have a sort of dots and canvas style merging into our shapes that's why i call this as a spider because it reminds uh, the the texturing you know and even here on top i can apply a little bit more something like this uh you can you know explore a lot the the brushes the techniques and there's one okay that i'll uh, show now which is more related to to foliage let me let me draw now um, a new example i'm gonna use there are more brushes right which is more related to the foliage of course you can see these examples of each one on here if you go here you can see some different effects but the one that i really like a lot and i've used it a lot it is the let me show you i, I will um, take a look on the chat soon just to uh, complete my logic here i'm gonna use this one in green and then i will start to make this look imagine if you try to draw each leaves you know let's say that i can make a, a tree or a bunch of grass you now it's changed a little bit more the color as you add it is fantastic and i'm gonna make this dark and then i'll add below you can clip protect alpha and then apply just like that you know and apply more time and have something like this it's very uh, stylized i'd say it's not uh, realistic it's more, much more stylized and besides this you can use um a foliage uh, smudge which is uh, related to here let me show you uh, oh, using the foliage you and smudge i use a lot this smudge and i'll explain why because you can merge the colors and have this result here we are making some transition it's it works like um let's say uh, blending you know you are you are merging the colors you know uh, let me see now the the chat all right hold on let me see what people are asking uh, let me see ah Sarah my girlfriend is here <laughs> welcome my friend I say also <laughs> my friend to my girlfriend because she is definitely a, a great friend partner you know um, if you wanna I suppose that uh, ah, I think that you have a question regarding Windows Wink, which is more technical issue, right? Because when I was using Windows, I at the moment I'm using Mac, but in Windows you need to set up the the Windows Ink in the in the software. You no, know? you need to go in the settings. So I'm not so sure if I will be able to to assist you. Uh, uh, let me see here. There's on forum, you know, you can go there because I'm using Mac and I cannot show you a real example. But if you open the walk on, you know, uh, here, let me go and open a walk on. You probably can go here in the, I don't know if it's paint calibration, display settings, but uh, no, no, it's not the display settings, sorry. It's more the. Um, I think it's paint calibration. Yeah, I need to see the options here. It's gonna open here. Uh, go here in the pen, all right, in your side, and go to the Windows Ink. I think this, that's gonna display below and options. Take a look here in these options as well, all right? Because probably this uh, I can see a problem about the driver, you know. I hope that it helps uh, somehow. Okay, uh, going back here. So here I have just created this merge, you know, effect. And 
you can of course explore many others there are many of them so if I stay here explain each one we're gonna take all the day all right um, now let's talk about the challenge that I want to bring all right for people here I want you know I want to develop peer review for this upcoming month at December now we are almost ending you know the year which was a fantastic year I hope that you had enjoyed and I want to complete this year by giving you a challenge that we're gonna make a splash art and I will explain how that works. Bonjour, Yannick Connaught, my friends. Bonjour. Um, so the challenge consists essentially in, in a splash art, you know, it's called splash art. Instead of, you know, doing, let me write, type here, splash art. Uh, instead of doing a you know standalone design like we usually do because of our time limitation here like ah, one object I want to see you guys doing a splash art you know so if you have no idea at all about what is splash art splash art is related to let me bring here as the example a more nice mobile game oh splash art is something like this Know, it's something very very like this in terms of composition where you're gonna have a scene you know usually you have oh, this as just some quick examples about splash art so splash art brings a uh, full elements like backgrounds some titles if needed uh, the characters uh, you know the foreground there is a a very huge composition you know it's not something that you, you do in one hour it's usually takes a good a good time you know perhaps one week or more it really depends but the thing is that we make this a splash art you know let me hide here our boring penguin <laughs> hold on go here and here we go um, the thing is that we're gonna make a splash art in Christmas you know we're gonna create this to be in Christmas, Christmas. And that case, what is the idea? The idea is that you can use, for example, 3D or 2D to make a splash art about Christmas. In my case, I'm thinking to make a uh, kind of Santa Claus, you know, composition as a small example. Of course, not exactly this one here okay this is Santa Claus um, you can decide to create a Santa Claus carrying some gifts or you know some penguins around uh, the creativity is going to be yours you know <laughs> but the thing is is not to make uh, you know one thing that's gonna take you much time because let's say that we finish the the month and year and then you have finished you're gonna feel frustrated and we don't want that so at least making a composition that that brings two characters, a scene, background, is going to uh, emphasize in a very nice way. And that's why I want to start here with you today, make some sketches, and from there we can start to decide uh, in which direction we can go. And I'm thinking as well to use 3D in the part of my process, you know, because 3D, 3D is something that I'm using and getting more confident and better by the time. So it, it's going to be a very nice challenge because it's here, the final challenge that is going to, you're going to place all your skills, all your knowledge, everything that you have uh, learned with me, with others, I don't know. But it's a change that is going to, let's say, wrap up this year and then we are done. And take a look here on the calendar, you know, that we have. Let me open here the calendar. Uh, just take a look here. Hold on. So in the calendar, you know, we are here on the first, very first day on December. So the Christmas mass is 25, five, you know. And we're going to have until, I'd say, oh, we have today. We have until the 2022, I'd say. Uh, now, I think that we can decrease because this day people will be in holidays somehow. Yeah, I will give a deadline, something like two weeks. I think it's enough. 
Of course, uh, we could g give more time, but starting from this week, we're gonna have two weeks to finish, which is which is good. It's not very I uh, you know uh, time consuming, but calculating about time, if we spend more one hour per day, you're gonna have something like ten hours of project, which is which is good. You can have a, a nice result having ten hours, you know. Of course, this is a challenge that it's just to wrap up the year. You know, you're not obligated to to make this. It's only if you wish. I don't want people, let's say, uh, having problems. You know, uh, but the thing is that we we bring our creativity in one splash art. So how I would uh, approach this? Um, of course, I want to. Uh, bring the live streams to talk about my decisions and how and why and I'm not completely sure that I will I will host all the process in live because you know it's gonna take me more time but I'm thinking about to break down what I do in back let's say backstage while I'm offline I will do the splash art and you guys as well will be able to follow me during this journey Okay, it's just let's say two weeks of journey uh, of doing this. Perhaps I can host one more live stream, let's say Monday, just to give feedbacks to people. I think that's gonna be nice. I need to to verify, but here we go. I will exemplify some examples of splash art. So on splash art, when you are creating, you need to have. Let me write this down because you understand what I mean here. You have a history, you know. Let me go and write this down. You have what else history, you know? Or story, I don't know. Uh the context, you know, the context. I will place this as context. Some gestures. The gestures uh, is going to push to the actions. So here, uh, you can see this cat is, is jumping. You know the gesture is that he's jumping. You know, we have this shape here. It's very clean shape as you can see, a uh, very clean. Even a silhouette you can see this as a cat. You know, which is make this really really good. Um, the gesture that's going to lead you to an action. So the action is he's trying to. Yeah, to kill the fish. <laughs> so there is a kind of, you know, a cute context, but it's a bit, a bit cruel. You know, he's trying to uh, kill the the fish. Uh, the context is that we have a very open world here, a very colorful. Uh, you can see as well. This is the bad quality image because I just got from Google, and. We have the cat behind, you know, looking from the... I don't know if it's a cat. I think it's a cat. And uh, we have the, all the composition, you know, uh, the, uh, the context that it is, is the game, you know. Of course, you can make a, let's say, a splash art for movies. You know, it, it is really nice. Hello, Cindy, Cynthia. <laughs> My friend Cynthia, a long time, great friend. As well, here you can see there is a, always a movement. So when you are creating splash art, uh, try to envision the action. Because as always, we usually here on the Vectorize, during the lives, we usually do a, a character, you know, like, like this. And, and he's still, you know, he's just uh, like that in front. But there is no action, you know, there is no action here, no action. And the, the splash art in another side brings action you know it's you can make the the character you know like this ah you know like screaming here ah you know ah or he's screaming you know he ra raising his arms like that you know so there is more action and then if you add a bit more you know more elements like let's say a dog here you know a dog that's not a dog it's just a circle it brings even more life, you know. Can you see the difference here with this one and this one? So, giving context to what you are creating, uh, talking about art, right? I'm not talking about affinity, to be honest now. 
the affinity uh, topic is gone <laughs> hours ago. So here's about how to make art, how to make compositions. So a special art is going to uh, make your design even more interesting. E even if you are trying to apply it to the industry, if you want to work, if you want to bring more attention to what you create, I'd say that making actions, making characters expressive, environment with deep, you know, and let's say perspective, try, try to give more context and feel, you know, more the, the imagination, I'd say, is going to make your design look much better, you know. This is what I mean about everything that we are doing here, okay? So action, it is something that you need to, to always consider when you are creating something. Unless if you are preparing the design for some three artists to, to create, you, you, he needs to understand, or she needs to understand the, the context. Okay, so uh, we have just 10 minutes left before we wrap up, and let's grab here some visual references, but I want to make something related to uh, Christmas, you know, so what are the objects that we can add in Christmas? Can you tell me on the chat, please? Oh, here we, I'm just, just grabbing some famous elements. So usually we have, you know, this same, same, always same, you know, to be honest, uh, Christmas is not something that makes uh, artistically, you know, like it's always same. Of course, it's a, it's a great data, you know, for Jesus. Uh, so what I mean is that try to go outside of the standard things you know try to make something that is different try to combine things that is different because i feel by all those years doing art is that with more you push your creativity uh, in a different way you call more attention you know because you can see the same santa claus of course i'm not saying that you, you draw santa claus with you know uh uh, ice patch or something crazy but try to imagine a little bit more different as you usually would do you know because you you need to consider to go out of the comfort zone you know even for me um it's hard to to go to this more abstract way you know it's really hard that's why it's abstract you know and okay so i got here these images just to clarify more my triggers head here you know like to to bring my ideas you know and this is w how i would do i will give you a couple of examples about how would you do to make this splash art uh, sketch okay i'm going just to create a new layer and i will start with my round brush okay that's gonna be available for you guys on the Vectorize and ultimate curse. Let's say that I start with uh, a ground. You know, I'll make a kind of ground, a world place, perhaps something that I can continue and make in 3D somehow. So I have here this ground, and then I can make um, this shape here. You know, that I don't know how to call this. I can make something like that big here uh, uh, like I said you can make something even more crazy uh, let's say here I will make it in two directions instead of one you know so in my head this can be a tree and then I will draw some lines I mean co conceptualizing my idea Okay, we have these two objects, so we can add, um, we have options, of course, to explore with Santa Claus or the snowman and others. I'm not thinking about adding the tree, but let's say that we add a tree here. We can make a tree like that for now. We can also think the character. I'm thinking about making a Santa Claus. Let's try to, to make him in this direction. The, the thing about doing sketch is that 
only us that is doing this cat we understand what we are creating basically let's make I'm gonna make a Santa Claus kind of similar to Drew Harvey somehow he's going to have an action oh he in my head here is happening he could be see uh, sits in a, in a in a gift box somehow this is how I'm playing and he can be with his legs like that he can look in a, in a kind of a toy it can be a toy or or even a gift can you see that I'm giving context to what I'm doing here I always start with few lines as possible I want to make it with uh, something like this probably I can change this idea right it's my first idea here so nothing very fancy This looks like a bit dwarf, but I like it. Let's add uh, some Iris brows here. Oh, the nose becomes really nice. I really like that. If you hide the, if you hide the, let's say the background, we got only this. Uh, Lupita Huerta said, "Do do the brush and acid you provide with the club come with commercial use?" Yeah, it's open to use commercially. You know, you can use and work. What uh, people cannot do is just to grab the brushes and resell, you know, kind of uh, sell, uh, yeah, kind of you buy and sell to others, which is uh, kind of piracy, you know, but yeah, the only restriction is this, which is just for, you know, let's say, protect, you know, copyrights, but commercial use is always fine, you know, you can earn your money with the brushes, of, of course, which is what I wish for you guys, I wish you guys can be succeed with what I provide you, you know, you, you guys deserve that. Okay, um, here we go. I have the, the Santa Claus very in a simple way that you can even block out this later in Blender, you know. Let me try to, to make this box a bit better. And then I will make something like this. Uh, his feet is a bit, in my head this is still uh vague I, I need to polish more but the beard perhaps we can make it small a little bit more small i don't know but i really like this kind of very very big one let's try to make something more stylized beard not very rounded but a bit with, with some triangles in between, you know. Here, I will and define more these lines like that. In this sketch stage, I like to be kind of loose. Don't think so much. Even here, these lines I can erase. Or like I said before, I usually make my ideas like that. And uh, what this can be related to the 3D, if you, if you are here because of the 3D, is that without this, how do you know what you're gonna do? You know, this will be your, uh, let's say, uh, your map, your layout to guide you through your process, you know, like this. Oh, he can be, uh, have uh, his legs, one up and down. Oh, look how this can change everything, you know. I'm considering to make he's raising one leg, like up, like happy, you know. So only these legs here can bring a very nice representation about his feeling. I really like this. I think that we can probably make it in 3D with the part of our process. Uh, 
I will change these arrows bro to something a bit more cute and more gentle you know because if I <laughs> uh, bring his expression a bit down I think it's gonna make it a bit in different ways and I'm considering if I will change this later but it's always fine adding his very very cartoony fits on here like so yeah I think it's, it's very nice this splash could be a bit more intense, like he's jumping, looking, you know, we could do that and probably I will think more if we we, are, we can do that in terms of action. I think for what, let's say, I purpose, it's, it's the is what the message, you know. And here in this layer, you know, this one, I want to make some sketches based in silhouettes you see Rem remember that I made you know these lines and probably I will kind of simulate a painting you know so you see I'm gonna paint like that he did the ground right like that then I will make it a bit dark and can you use the select tool just to emphasize this area wrong because I like this I want okay paint here just sketching right and then I can do those oh look how the silhouettes brings us a easy way to read immediately you know like that perhaps we can add the tree behind but of course one thing that I usually do to not overlap let me make the is everything in white hold on I'm just covering this area uh, because I want to protect to not get the painting the background painting inside of it that's why I'm doing this just to, to protect very nice and now I can continue from here and perhaps make the tree you know the tree we can emphasis here let me bring everything like that in terms of size I usually like to zoom out you know I would like to zoom out just to visualize a bit more let me go you don't need to copy the way that I'm doing all right ah the star let's add a star shape here somehow very sketchy you know it looks like a person <laughs> And then I will I will play with the shapes. I can now erase. Look, erase, 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 and add. And change more. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. I think it's gonna be nice in this direction, like that. Yeah. One suggestion is that you flip your design, you know, it's important that you start to flip. I think for now the idea seems very solid. And this is going to be white for the right frame use here as well. And I start in white this is exactly how I try to imagine my my things 
when I'm creating, you know. Only using the first brush, the, the rounded one. Yeah. And you can go even more further, like, let's add a uh, background like this. Uh, making you can even more increase some details like that you see some snow falling like this make this as white adding a layer at the top And just not look the, the, that this is a grass and it's not winter because we need to make this in white as well. And the tree a little bit like that. So doing this decision of, you know, conceptualizing the idea, it's what makes uh, your design decision faster. Imagine if I try to somehow model this or vectorize, you know, probably I would, I would create be crazy, <laughs> you know, in the process. So I always, I always think in, a, in the idea first, you know, in a low, low idea, not a very high end idea. When I mean low it is something that you don't need to have a lot of expectation you know, to create for instance and the the thing is that you have the creativity to change this always you don't need to go if you don't like ah, i don't like this background you can switch you can change you can do this you know it's it's very optional and you have all the liberty the creativity to change that you know this is uh what's important and um, I, I really like, you know, the way that I've placed the elements and we can kind of build our concepts, making it in, in 3D. I, I plan to make this in 3D as well. You know, and of course, we're going to change a lot as we progress. So we have from now two weeks, okay, to finish this project. So I want to see you guys doing a splash art Christmas. You can add more things. Perhaps I will add. Uh, more gifts let me see here the references we have a lot of things that we can explore some uh what's the name of this guy <laughs> i forgot yeah perhaps his bag you know with a bag here with some gifts can be nice as well but the thing is that we fill up more this scene you know okay uh i think that's covered pretty much what i wanted the goal for everything you know i uh, it's it's a very nice live stream. So we discuss, discussed about the the news of Affinity 2.3, okay, this prior tool, and also the new brushes available for you. So try to, to use these brushes. Um, also, it's going to be available for the existing uh, courses members, all right? I think that's, that's all. But let me answer your questions. I hope that I haven't missed any questions that you bring to me here. Uh, if I miss it, I uh, apologize. Ask me again so I can see. Uh, okay, let me check this now. Let me see. Mm. Ah, when you make items you totally love, make sure to save them as an asset for future use. Yeah, it's a it's a nice it's a nice process of saving time. Really, when you are working, you can always save and use later which is good i used to, i do this a lot hello Rene, my friend where are have you been i miss you all right and also where is tick where is the members i miss some members the honest ones <laughs> okay um nice to meet you my friend so uh i think that's it's all uh, i hope that i haven't I took a lot of your time i hope that you got a very insightful uh, you know, live stream, and uh, you guys can join to the club in order to have these brushes, right? Of course, 
The reason that it is uh, kind of uh, support is because I'm sharing this to the people that support. You know, that everything that it, it took me a lot, really a lot of time to build all of this and the experience. So your support is gonna really support me uh, to keep continuing. So the Vectorize Club link where you can join, it is right here available to you. So you can get the tier based in your needs. You can go with a subscription, all right, where you get regular contents, uh, support, community, and also with the uh, standalone courses, you know. And, you know, the nice thing is that at the moment, you know, we are growing in our sides in terms of 3D. I'm, I'm still learning 3D. This month it has been crazy for me, but let me show you what I, I've been done. I, I was creating, creating a 3D version of a character for a, cl a client of mine, a great friend. And I'm planning the 3D because I want to have a much better posture, you know, of the gesture, the character gesture, you know. So here as a prev, you know, how um, I accomplished this. And I'm very happy, you know, to make this transition from 2D to 3D. I, I have not quit <laughs> completely 2D and I, I love 2D. But having the 3D, uh, that that case, it adds much more valuable for your portfolio or work. You're gonna have, um, I'd say, guys, you know, your design is gonna increase a lot, even your time producing. And I know that some people, uh, let's say, that are not familiar with 3D or something like this, can have this. Oh my gosh, should I move or not? First, you, you must feel uh, comfortable. You know, you don't need to be forced to do something that you don't like. Um, I'm, I'm doing more 3D, but as part of my study, but I'm not working professionally. I'm not producing any kind of, you know, amazing work yet. I'm still newbie. It takes time to grow as tr 3D artist. But just to update you that how I'm progressing so far and uh, I just joined and I don't know wh what this 5D is. 5D is basically, uh, <laughs> let me uh, uh, tell you, it is a kind of a sum, you know, you have the two more the 3D. Let's say we work with both sides, you know, have the two and 3D at the same part of the process. That's why, uh, you know, we, we are calling us 5D. In the future, you know, uh, we, we're going to have also some virtual reality work. I, I expect in the future, I'm still waiting, you know, let's say, after I feel comfortable with 3D, I plan to use some glasses, you know, like making art with real 5D stuff. But I want to do all art, all type of art, you know, basically, you know. Uh, no worries, well, I, I will guarantee your access, okay, to the masterclass. Uh, let me see here. Yannick Connard asked it, which Mac OS compatible tablet do you use with Ed? I'm using, you know, the Mac OS. I think it is the, let me see, uh, Sonoma, all right. M1 Max, the process, M1 Max. It's a MacBook Pro from 2021. It's It really w works well here on my side. It's working. And I'm using the Cintiq 16 and your normal standard one. Okay, uh, I think that this answered pretty much. Okay, you don't need to have amazing tools like uh, the best computer, the best tablet. Uh, the art is only depends about you, your efforts, your dedication. Of course, having a good tablet is going to change. Yeah, definitely is going, but it's only up to you. You know, uh, don't get for some people that can feel blocked by not having the best apps, the best car, the newest house. Um, really, don't follow this system that we just want to feel you like behind. So if you feel behind, my friend, we reconsider all the thoughts because it's hard you know, for us to always keep updated and spend a lot of money and cash updating our setup. I spend a lot of money, you know, Operating here, my stuffs, <laughs> you know, uh, it's it's really huge, uh, expensive. Even for me here in Brazil, it's much more uh, than m others countries. Okay, uh, 
that's it guys uh, i want to thank you really so much for your time uh, we will explore more this splash chart i probably can come up with more ideas uh, this was a quick example about how we can accomplish that okay and thank you thank you really so much in you know in my heart and i'll see you the next week where we can uh, talk more about the splash chart and finish together this special uh, challenge okay thank you and bye bye take care